Good evening, YouTubers, fellow reloaders. This is actually reloading content. And for those of you who have been around a while, like 40 years plus, which means uh, you were somewhat of an adult in the 80s, which would put you old like me, what you have in front of you here is an RCBS green machine progressive press and based on the 10,000 uh, serial number 10,000 ish serial number uh, 10.7 10,700 and change this press was manufactured in 1983 I believe the press run was uh, roughly 81 to 85 so this would put uh, the press right in the middle uh, I've seen them with clear tubes. I've seen them with green tubes for the uh, case feeder. I've seen them with green and clear for the powder hopper as well. I'll uh, move this up on the bench and talk a little bit more about it. Uh, this particular example is incredibly dirty and dusty, but amazingly complete and functional, which is uh, hard to find in all honesty. So this, without question, will be a multi-video segment. This will be part one. I think I'll break it into uh, part one is this, just the intro. You can see how yucky dirty it is, but at the same time, how beautifully smooth and feature complete. Uh, as well as uh, the second video will probably be the same thing after I clean it up, probably disassemble, clean it up and make it look uh, a lot better than it does now. Uh, I've reached out to Dan at Inline Fabrication because obviously it's going to need a custom mount and uh, uh, for my flush plate system. And that is uh, that base is roughly five inches uh, deep and six inches wide. And I was asking Dan, you know, making the custom plate won't be an issue, but what I'd like to do is to be able to make a plate that has a bin, some type of bin catch so that, you know, completed rounds would be able to, you know, go into a bin. So uh, putting it just on a plate, a, uh, an inline fabrication plate would mean that all of my finished rounds, as you can see my finger wiping across the dust, all of my finished rounds would just fall on the floor. So uh, let me move this over to the bench. We'll get a closer look. All right, as I said, this is the RCBS green machine. Found an old uh, manual online that uh, tells me everything I need to know about this particular machine, how it operates. I mean, it's pretty straightforward for anyone who's familiar with reloading. But uh, it's got some features that were uh, not unique for its time. Uh, RCBS wasn't necessarily the first to implement uh, certain things. But if you look at what I put on my Dillon in terms of uh, the mini bullet feeder, excuse me, uh, the brass case, I can't remember what it's called, mini case feeder from Double Alpha, uh, pretty similar in concept to this case feeder that you feed them. It's got an indent. I don't know how many it'll take. Uh, it's five tubes. Fill them full of brass. And then they drop in. And you just rotate around. Uh, again, I don't think RCBS was the first to do it. Um, maybe uh, uh, unique in the sense that uh, the time they did it. For, again, 40 years ago. So again, uh, Brass goes in, and what makes the the setup quite unique is it's progressive, but it's linear. So a piece of brass would go to all four of the stations, uh, decap, resize, powder flare, bullet seat, and crimp, and uh, and also prime on the uh, on the powder for the powder drops. So it's got some really really unique features. Uh, some will say that this particular <coughs> device for feeding primers is less than reliable. Some people have replaced it with a 
tube, uh, a vertical tube, as you see, unlike uh, the Hornady and the Dillon. And uh, we're going to run it through its pace. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a uh, a da a uh, primer to actually drop. This thing is, if I said this was dirty, that would be an understatement. It is, I mean, you can just see it. It's caked with dirt. I was trying to get the uh, primer pocket a little cleaner. I mean, there's, it's just, it's, it's dirty. It's probably got 40 years of dirt. I don't know that this was ever really used because I don't see any marks on the bottom of the press. Let me take the powder measure off as well. Don't need to break any old plastic that I either can't or would have a hard time replacing. And when you look at how this operates, again, it's got a long stroke on the RAM, and the RAM is very smooth. Just uh, and, and it's just it, left to right, just moves the brass along each station, primer drops. Uh, the way it actually activates is if your primers are in here. that locks in and what this does this little dog leg is if you watch what happens here it would rotate new primer would drop sorry it's not mounted to anything so it's a little shaky and then if you weren't priming you can just pop that up the way the powder measure works again quite unique in my opinion uh, it reminds me of the shot shell primers because right now you can see that these two pins which would activate the powder charge and again it's just a it's just a drop um, a uh, uh, a meter drop with these inserts so the charge has a particular uh, non-adjustable amount you would have to change this insert out to change the powder charge. Uh, this machine, probably the reason, maybe one of the reasons it lost popularity, it's dedicated to a caliber. So whereas you see your progressives today, easy head swap or die swaps, and yes, you can change the die and you can change some of the components here. I think uh, um, some of them were adjustable or, or modifiable to nine millimeter. I think it came in four sizes. Uh, 38, 357, 44, 9 millimeter, and then 45 ACP. But uh, back to the powder charge. So in, in order to activate this powder charge, you would, uh, hopefully I'll get this right. Okay. Without damaging anything. So you can see that uh, it turns it left and then right so right now it's dumping powder into the cavity and then as it goes down it's emptying powder into the case so if you were testing something you didn't want powder to drop you just pulled these back and that deactivated the powder supply and the powder charge again a very very cool little design very small footprint heavy as all can be um, unique handle in the sense that very uh, long shape, so um, or at least long travel, uh, not real uh, inconvenient on the arm. Uh, it's it's incredibly smooth, and when you look at how it operates, and I'm sure it could use a little oil. Some of the unique things that I found uh, that that I think are unique. Um, same thing with priming, active, deactive, is let's run. Uh, I have flared these already because uh, I don't have an ability to lock this down, so I don't want to try and uh, resize and then have the case stuck or whatever because I don't have the leverage. So we'll pseudo operate that. So if we were to drop a case uh, that would be in one of the green tubes, um, this slide would then present the case we would resize it would move into uh, priming 
So right now there would be a primer here and on the downstroke you're priming and flaring. Now what makes this really cool in my eyes uh, and one of the reasons why I've wanted one of these machines is the bullet feeding. You know, in most progressive presses, you'd have to do that today, unless there was some type of automatic bullet feeder. And uh, I've done something with my Dylan that mimics this uh, and has sped up my producing uh, capabilities, and I'll share that in another video. But uh, what was cool about this, and granted, I have not set this up for my desired uh, cartridge overall length, but you drop the bullet here. And this device is what seats the bullet. And there's the bullet being seated. And then moved over to crimp. And then after crimp. And granted, it's not moving smoothly because I'm uh, short stroking this because I, I just don't want things getting stuck and I've got no leverage. But that's pretty cool in my book and we'll do the same thing and try to prime so let's see what we can do with priming so I'm going to take this old dead primer that's essentially just a cup I'm going to drop it in there and see if yeah I don't I don't have any leverage Okay, so maybe, uh, maybe it did it. Nope, it didn't. So that primer is still stuck in there because I do not have the ability to, uh, to get any decent leverage. So we will yank that out. And I don't know if it's because things are dirty or what. But uh, this will get a massive cleaning. Uh, and again, things function. You can see how grody, in fact, let me get a towel, how grody that is. All right, grody test. White finger. Yeah, that metal is in beautiful condition. Uh, yuckies. And that cleaned up quite nicely. Yeah, I honestly don't think this was really ever used. It is. The metal is in amazing condition. There's no rust anywhere. Uh, it's it's dirty. It's dirty as all get out. But uh, you know, I don't even see rust in the in the heads of the uh, hex. Uh, and I'm quite. I've, I've watched videos online. I'm actually quite impressed with how smooth the RAM operates. Again, this isn't mounted, that's freestanding, and I'm not having any issues. Uh, it looks like this might need some oil because this seems to pop a little. But uh, I think that'll be fine after cleaning. Just an amazing machine, uh, stepping back in time. Uh, as I've said, I've, I've wanted one of these for a while just for the uh, the collectability sake uh, of finding them. And I want to say at the time of their uh, their original production from 81 to 85, they were about $350 to $500, depending on what came with it, uh, how it was set up, which uh, I don't know what uh, $500, $350. i will go with $350. Uh, I'm sure somebody will argue. Uh, the 350 to 500 so I've seen different things online and uh, I don't know what that is in 2022 excuse me 2023 dollars but we'll find out shortly and I'll uh, have that report out for the next video but uh, this is going to get a super super clean and uh, grease slash whatever else it needs uh, there's a tad bit of rust there uh, Maybe some of the dyes aren't doing so great. But again, it's uh, it's in freaking amazing condition. This is supposed to lock, so I'm assuming it 
screws in. This doesn't even want to move, so that's going to get some uh, some crawl. But uh, again, when I look at everything else, it is in amazing condition. Again, just cruddy as shit. Like, like right here. Look at that. But look at how that cleans up. That is absolutely brand new. Yeah, that is, that's too cool. Uh, I'm going to, I don't know if you can see right here how, how much crud is right there. It's just beyond amazing how much crud, long handle, how much crud is just built up, but it is in phenomenal condition. Feature complete too. That's uh, that's what really, really surprised me. And it's a little awkward to move due to its weight and interesting size. But again, uh, the idea was to reach out to uh, Dan at Inline Fab so that you know whether I put a uh, a riser on this, which I think I would. Probably the four or six inch riser. If he can come up with some type of bin mounting system, a plate that goes on top of the flush mount plate so that this would hook in and essentially sit right under there, that would be perfect. And obviously, I would need a green one. And the cover for this will be green. So, uh, just a all around really cool uh, machine to step back in time. Uh, I'm quite quite impressed with uh, how feature rich in terms of nothing looks broken there's even plastic tabs over here that are still intact I don't you can't see them very well but they're right there clear plastic tabs on each side for that to still be there um, just amazing and uh, that's my fingerprint of dust just heavy duty uh, really really heavy duty it's uh, um, it's quite robust i guess is the best word but i've also heard that they were quite unreliable and i don't know if that has to do with their linear functionality the challenges with the powder the powder hopper reminds me of uh, shot shell um, you know it's not case activated it will it will uh it's it's uh it's motion activated in terms of whether you've got this on or off so there's only two settings, on or off, and uh, if it's on and you don't have a case underneath the drop when the arm and the ram is uh, activated, then you're going to have a powder mess. So I don't know if it was just uh, you know something that didn't catch on because it was a little uh, quirky, but uh, again, uh, it's just in great shape other than there's a super smidgen of dirt. But again, when you wipe the dirt off, it looks brand new. Let's see what uh, this little area would look like cleaned. Yeah, that one's going to require a little more effort than just a, a wipe of a towel. But there are just so many areas that uh, just the wipe of a towel seems to bring it back to life. That's just too cool. So... Uh, this will be a, uh, a long cleaning project for me. Uh, so the next time you see this, it will look uh, a lot newer, a lot cleaner. And I uh, have to be careful with uh, the brittleness of the plastics because uh, finding this stuff today uh, is easier said than done. Uh, or it's... A fortune just like uh, you know the little primer bottle this is not the original primer bottle I think the original primer bottle was white uh, but this black kind of matches more of the press than a white primer catch bottle would but again the attention to detail for a primer catch case feeding bullet feeding without having to actually touch the brass um, it's very, very feature complete um, in terms of the design. It's very cool in terms of the design. And then again, for uh, all of the things to actually be here and, uh, and not broken or funked up other than just uh, being a little dirty. Um, quite, uh, I'm quite impressed. So I'll see what Dan has to say. 
about my ideas for the custom plate won't be an issue so putting a custom plate and a uh, and a riser that's just whether I do the custom plate myself and drill some holes or I have Dan do it um, probably gonna defer to Dan because I'd, I'd like the plate and the bin catch to match so if I did that myself that would be quite the hack so uh, uh, that is Dan's forte and uh, I will let him come back at me and see what he has to say but yeah this is just I mean it's in amazing condition sorry I'm drooling over it it's just too cool nice old piece of machinery from the past 40 years uh, from now uh, 18 uh, 1983 so last century uh, very cool more to come in the next few weeks take care folks